seeing it's about 6.30, I'm going to open up the hearings tonight for the Hazard Conservation Commission. First up tonight will be a request for determination of applicability. Don Dion seeks to remove a garage and turn it into an open parking lot at 85 Russell Street, map 4H, parcel 7. This property is in the 100 year floodplain. The applicant has expressed a concern for safety of tenants coming in and out of the lot in its current condition. Copy the submission of this request to increase the area that the tenants will have to turn around safely and safely join traffic on Russell Street. So, Don, you're up. Where, um, where is this place? 85, 85 Russell. Two, two places, two houses past Eschelot. Got, on, it. On the right. got it, got it. Going to okay, the thank you. Thank you. Is thank this you. where you're... You off you run your business out of no no this is just there's two two family apartment house okay there's three bedrooms in each one so there could be possibly a total of six vehicles at some point okay and since I've been living on Route Nine grew up on Route Nine I have seen that Route Nine expand itself twice if not three times the road used to be way away from that building and now. It's barely enough room to, if you put three cars in there, you actually have to back out to get onto the highway. Do we have a plot plan or anything showing it? Is this just all basic? No, I didn't, no, I didn't. I, didn't. I don't really, really see the, well, the request for the termination, you have that application? Yeah, that's what was submitted. I don't have no okay. We'll continue, go ahead. I mean, I just need the room for parking. The garage is of no value to me. I try to look up. I grew up on that street. I've never seen anything in that garage of value to make it historical. Uh, during the three county fair, they used to store hay in there from uh, Barney Muscovich's father on East Street. And the reason I know that because the ceiling in, on one end is like 13 feet, and there was a basketball hoop in there. And when I was in grade school, I used to go in there and play basketball. And then when that hay came in, it kind of pushed us out. But I've never seen, I tried to look up, I talked with Eleanor, uh, she's the little house on the end of the uh, service station there. And she walked to school, I think she's about 91 years old. And I tried to find out from her what it was used for, and, she has no idea, she's never seen anything in and out of that place. Wasn't it a uh, headstone? Well, well, the only headstone I ever seen, yes there was. He had like six in his front yard. But I just think that was like a headquarters. I think somebody that always stayed there, I think they were bought and picked up somewhere else and delivered. Could be. I never seen anything ever moved from there. There was no equipment to, that, that building is, Huge. It's, it's it's 34 by 52, I believe. And that, it was. I, I think I would have seen some sort of equipment walking to school at some point if that was ever used for anything. Wasn't that the coach? Probably give that. Yeah. Give a form of signature. Yeah, that's the one I didn't have. I this. I don't know. We got well, much less we know. What was the coach in here? I have much less to determine. Maxi negative positive. Not a basketball. You have to have that. This old man lived on Route 9. What, is, what was it? Where the monuments were? Yeah, when the ball was growing. Right. Right. But you're less. Do the next one. Well, Tulsi bought it. Was it not? He was well, on the half field, right? Well, you got to have these forms. Yeah, 50 years ago. Right. 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 And you have 50 years ago. And the kid was the kid changed his name to Norm. Yeah, the son. Yes, he did. The brother-in-law. Brother. The brother of North. He was. So we need forms for this. We need forms. Then he had all of the North. Yeah, I know. There was not. There was not. And uh, getting back to where I'm at with that, there is a slab there already. I am not touching the grade at all. The building be removed, and I would work right off of that slab. So you just tear down the building. I mean, you're not going to disturb the ground. No, I don't want to no touch any soil or whatsoever. Is there any reason? Do you need a parking area? Do you need a yes. I think the concrete out. At this point, I don't have the finances for that, and right now I'm just going to use it as it is. Okay. Seems pretty cut and dry. Yeah. But we don't have the forms to sign and pull over the. Uh, I didn't bring the forms, so she's going to get those. 
Okay. So I'm going to have to uh, we'll phone the officiating of it. We're going to we're going to get to this in a few minutes. Okay. Sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah, Okay, we have here. We'll, we'll take up. We're gonna jump ahead and take this a little bit. Shadow's getting all the forms available. Yeah, yeah. Bye, bye. Yeah, I'll be right back. That's right. Yeah, um, she'll be in the show. Two thousand twenty-two meeting minutes. Do we have a, any discussion on those? Do we have a motion to accept those? I'll make a motion. Board makes a motion. I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. 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 Do the, uh, let's, let's take up the other business. Go for support and funding of a proposed 57 acre ADR project on South Maple Street. Mm -hmm. Property owners Arthur C. West, who has previously enrolled over 200 acres into ADR. According to the initial appraisal, the property was valued at 630000 by the Mass Department of Agriculture. However, a new appraisal is underway and the local contribution has not been solidified, though we know NDAR. Massachusetts Department of Agriculture will be asking for 10% from the town. The CTA is currently offered to fund between 50 and 80% of the local contribution, leaving the 20% and 50% to go to expand, leaving between 20% and 50% to go to expand to the conservation TDR transfer development rights account. Which currently has a balance of 108425 and a quarter. One option might be to agree on an upper limit of funds to allocate to this project so the funding request may be submitted to the CPA for the contribution, be put to a vote, and be brought to the town meeting. A member of the Conservation Commission shall attend the CPA meeting when this application is discussed. Perhaps Edward could attend. 
as the CPA's high officer, town town representative. The CPA meeting will be on March 21st at 7 p.m. So, Evan, can you take care of that? You refuse to go to town meeting, correct? Yep. Yeah, Mary Thayer is our president. Uh, she should explain what's going on here. Okay. Oh, we can't hear you. Hi, everyone. Um, so we're learning about the APR and the West Farm has had an approved APR and it sort of, I guess, fell between the cracks a little bit. So we're trying to get it through to be able to be in the May town meeting. Um, the, the state pays 90% and that's going up to 95%. So in the future, hopefully we only, the town only has to pay for five. But um, this one is 10%. It was valued at 630,000. And so the town needs to come up with 63,000. Um, and in the, in the past, CPA paid 100%. But once the TDR fund, the transfer of development rights began to be accumulate money, the Conservation Commission has um, been putting in 50% and asking the CPA for 50%. And the Conservation Commission is the one that as I understand it, fills out the application and applies for the um, CPA funds. And if the CPA committee approves it, then um, it goes to have the finance committee and the select board you know, weigh in, and then it goes to on the warrant for town meeting. Um, there's a little bit of a wrinkle with this one in that because enough time has elapsed, um, they can only, the state did an appraisal at 630,000 and the landowner, the West, Arthur West accepted that figure. Um, because the appraisal is more than a year, then um, they have to do another one. And if the appraisal goes up, then um, the state does not put in any more money. They've agreed to 600, the 90% the of 630,000. Um, so that, that's all they're gonna pay. So then, the, say it's an extra 20 grand or 50 grand or whatever it is, if anything, then either the Conservation Commission and CPA um, fund it or the landowner accepts the 630,000 and might be able to get a tax donation for the difference. Um, so that's, I'm not quite sure how to handle that. Um, if it does go higher, we, we kind of don't have time to revote. They aren't going to find out the appraisal, they think, till pretty close to May. So that's kind of late to be on the warrant um, for a change. So, so a couple questions are, one is if it's a 63,000, how much is the, the Conservation Commission going to take out of the TDR? Um, and then how much do you want to apply for the CPA fund? And in the past couple of years, you've been doing 50%. The CPA likes to see, hopefully the petitioner put in some money, um, ideally at least 20%. And so think about, you know, it'd be nice for future APRs to feel like you have plenty of funds to do that. Um, I, I'm not gonna, you know, that's totally up to you on how much you wanna, you wanna put in of that 63, or do you wanna say, you know, up to a certain amount to cover if the appraisal comes in higher. I'm, I'm not sure the best way to handle it. In the future, I think it'll be more streamlined. Um, it'll come to, if an APR is being approved, it'll come to town hall. It'll get sent to um, Shyla um, for the staff person for the Conservation Commission. And then you can vote on it and do the application to the CPA. So hopefully we won't be taking more than a year um, in terms of the appraisal in the future. Um, it goes through a lot of hoops to get approved by the state. So it's, you know, they, they feel it's a worthwhile um, APR. So we have to come up with at least $63,000 between the CPA and the conservation account, TDR. Correct. Who are those people? Um, uh, she She's is Mary person. Thayer. No. no, she's on CPA. I'm chair of the CPA committee, right? And no. How much do you think the CPA would appropriate toward this, Mary? We have um, we have plenty of money. Well, we have more than that in the open space. Um, you know, we'd like to see 
we generally ask for at least 20% from whoever's applying if possible. Um, you know, it's all town funds. So it's, <laughs> it's all money that's been set aside for this, the open space, you know, bucket and the TDR. So it's all town funds. So it's, it's, um, you know, it's, None so of it affects the tax rate, which is nice. Either uh, authorize a certain amount from the TDR, then anything additional above that could be funded by the CPA town meeting. Is that a possibility? Correct. Yeah. We, when you apply to the CPA, um, and there's an application, um, which um, Andy Morris Freeman has said he'd be he's on the committee. He'd be more than glad to work with Shiloh, whoever would be filling it out, um, just putting the information in. And then we're going to meet on March 21st um, to vote on this, have a special meeting for it. Yeah, this this got lost in the shuffle. This was supposed to be on the town meeting, the special town meeting last fall. But due to the Board of Selectmen's gutting of our little committee, it got kind of lost in the shuffle. And we we didn't do it. It's as simple as that. And we want to uh, square up and do this uh, APR sooner rather than later. That's all. So if 20% of 63,000 is roughly $13,000. Correct. 20% would be about $25,000. Right. But with the, my thoughts are if we appropriate a certain amount and then let the CPA pick up the difference on the appraisal. Yeah, that's what that's what uh, Mary and I were thinking would, would happen. What do you think? You know, we have no idea how if the appraisal is going to go up or what's going to go up. Right. Five percent. We don't know. That's the thing. If if the appraisal goes up, the state's only going to give us six hundred thirty thousand dollars. So <laughs> if the appraisal goes up to 700,000 is gonna come out of the town coffers one way or the other. Either it's gonna come from the TDR or from the CPA or a combination of it, both. It, what do we use historically for the past figure? Was it 60%, we take 20%, 40%? We've, uh, according to Mary right now, the state is paying 90. How much is the- So the, the state is paying 567,000 and asking the town to pay 63,000. Okay. Historically, the Conservation Commission has contributed what percentage of that 10 percent? We, we've gone before in the past and paying half and half. The last so few the years, percent. you've done half and half. Yeah. I, I thought, and with the CPA, is that maybe we should take, because it was a mistake on the Concom's fault, that we should put the larger part, the larger portion of the bill. That's all. That's what I was thinking. We have 130, we have 171,000 in the set aside for the open space. Um, we only got 108,000 in this account. Right. Um, so what we were, what Mary and I were thinking of is let's, let's see what you guys want to do. You want to, and because the state Plods along at its own rate and its own speed. It's not going to be a figure will not be available until town meeting, mm -hmm. and we have to get the town. Uh, we have to get the motion written up and done everything right. Mm -hmm. So before that, to have it reviewed and entered into warrant and so, so forth and so on. Here's my thought. We'll see how the rest of the board feels. Half of 63,000 is 31.5. What do we call it? 33,000. From, uh, from the TDR? TDR, and then let the CPA pick up the difference, whatever's left after the appraisal. Uh, what if the appraisal comes in very high? Um, <coughs> that's all. Well, I think we have to wait till the appraisal. Well, right now, I mean, they got a hundred deal on this. Okay, but they got. They got 70% more in their open space account than we do in the TDRs. Right. So we're right. already providing over half of this already. 
right? So is is if if the balance is going to come out of the CPA, don't have too much of a problem because we can take it out of the open space account, drain that down, and then take it out of the general fund. Correct, Mary? We can. Yeah, the general fund can be used on any of the buckets. I, I will say I'm not sure the CPA will want an open-ended figure. I think that might be a, I, I mean, one thing to do is to say the 63,000 and if it comes out higher than the West could reapply in, in September, we just don't want them to decide it's too much time to wait or something. Um, you know, I think, I think having just an open-ended, you know, we might say up to, you know, we'll provide, if you're doing 33,000, we'll provide maybe up to and give a figure of 50,000 or something. Um, I'm not sure we'd leave it totally open-ended. But then, but then if you're short, you got to go back to, you're going you to push that to September, so. Or, or the West accept what they've already agreed to. Um, it, you know, if it if it comes in at seven hundred and they agree to the six hundred and thirty thousand, they could have a seventy thousand dollar donation to the town, tax wise. Um, whether or not they'd want to do that, I don't know. So it's. Um, hey, Mr. Chairman. Gary. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey. It, you can amend it on town meeting floor at that point if there is a change. I, I do imagine. A, do, a dollar amount we can amend on the town meeting floor? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can. I don't know. I, I, aren't you going to have to have the uh, vote of all the conservation commission members? Because not all of us attend the meeting. We, it's not like we're having a, a meeting to discuss that, to, uh, to agree to it all. Put a question in the audience. Go ahead. No, in the audience. Uh, okay, Joe. How much is there in the TDR transfer development rights? How much do we have? How much uh, has been? We have 108,000 left in the account. 108. They get about 170 something thousand dollars in the open space. Right. Okay. As long as the the treasurer or somebody verifies those numbers, then you can go with it because. Transfer development rights usually comes from a, it's not taxable, it usually comes from a developer that does not have enough parking place right. and they're willing to pay for open farmland space uh -huh. to gain uh, a little bit more leverage in their parking situation. Right. So it's really not tax claim, I mean, tax money coming out of the town coffers. Correct. And You're right. The treasurer should have an exact number. so. You want us well the the question is not the question is wh what do we set the limits at that's the question do we set the limits at fifty thousand from cpa and thirty one thousand from i don't know that's what we wanted to ask the conservation commission and this is what we're going to ask town meetings for because it got lost in the shuffle it did I'll be the first to admit it. The town meeting floor would have all the answers. I think you all have to come up with the answers, or the town treasurer does. I don't. Because to admit that at the town floor, it's going to always be cumbersome. Yeah, I I would hate to start doing that personally. Yeah. That's just a bad practice to start my own. I want, I wonder if we um, try to vote on up to you know a ten percent increase in the price, which would be another sixty three thousand. You know, maybe pick a figure like that. Um, so it would basically six hundred thirty. It would go up to close to seven hundred thousand if the new appraisal came in. So it'd be based on what the appraisal is. Um, we assume it'll be higher, but based on the appraisal up to. Um, you know, adding on another 63,000. That's one way to make sure we cover it. We won't pay more than the appraisal, but at least it wouldn't be. Um, and then at town meeting, we could say hopefully what the actual figure would be. Right, 
Right. There has to be a, a set figure. There has to, you can't just say, well, we think it's going to be this and wait for everything to happen. There has to be a finalized figure of, of how much money is going to be taken out of which bucket, for lack of a better term. Well, if I were in your position, the TDR transfer development rights money can only go for preservation of farmland. Correct. The CPA money, you will have a choice. It's not only preservation of farmland, that was the original intent. Now they have expanded the open space recreation area ball fields. So if you want to make sure that that uh, CPA money goes for preservation of farmland like it was originally intended, you would spend the majority of the CPA money because then there is no wiggle room for what is done with the transfer development rights. It's just a, I, I, I agree with you. We're not always going to get TDR money. Right. We're not going to always get TDR money from people. Right. But the CPA money comes in every year. Right. I, agree, I, I agree with what you're saying. That's why I was proposing 33000 which is already a little over half, and the difference would come out of the CPA. It's another $60,000, the CPA would have to take that in. Yeah, that's okay. I, don't, I personally don't have a problem with that. What do you think, Mary? I think, I think that that's fine. Um, I mean, the, C, the CPA has a total available of two million five, and once and any of that can be used for open space as well. It's not just limited to the hundred seventy one thousand, like Edwin said. So, um, may not come in more, but right now we're already contributing over right. fifty percent of thirty three thousand. I thought that was more than fair. So my my proposal is, is we have somebody who wants to back it up and. We'll contribute thirty-three thousand from the TDR, and then the CPA will take in the difference of whatever they want to up to. They can, they can determine that at their own meeting. Okay. So somebody just needs to get me an application <laughs> filled out. Oh, you got it. Got it ready to go. <laughs> so how does the rest of the board feel about that? It sounds good. I like that idea. We have a motion for thirty-three thousand. Board makes a motion to approve 33,000 TDR towards the Arthur West JTR. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, second, sit. Any discussion? CDA is, uh, it, the CDA will be, will, will be the balance. Okay, the balance. What, uh, whatever they want to go up to, we're going to have to determine that. Yeah. Above and beyond. Yeah. So, uh, Gordon? Yeah. Edwin? Aye. Ray? Yes. Dave? Myself, you know, okay. Tech here is we're all done with that. Good. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, reading the motion again, I'm not reading the request. I don't know. So this is going to be a negative number two determination. The work described in the request is within an area subject to protection of the act is a floodplain, but will not remove fill dredge off that area because all the work is above grade. Mm -hmm. Therefore, said work does not require the following to notice intent. So we have a motion for a negative two determination. Um, Board makes the motion. I'll second. Everyone seconds it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Board? Aye. Everybody? Unanimous. Yeah. Okay. So what's the negative two? Two misses on this one. So you're all set, John. Good. 
just you got it. You know that everything that is done in Hadley is done in a fishbowl. Shiloh is going to be getting a phone call the instant you start pulling off of one board from that garage. So don't be stupid. Be be nice about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all. That's all we're asking. I don't think anybody's going to say it. I want the sheep. <laughs> no, but you realize that everything everything that's done in the town of Hadley is in the fishbowl. I know I know what I'm doing five minutes after I do it from my neighbors. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. When can I start on that? Well, we have to get the form filled out. Oh yeah, but I mean there's, there's no waste period, but I have to wait for something in the mail. No, yeah, you're gonna have to get this from us in the mail, technically. No, I don't see where you're feeling this. This is a cut and dry, as far as I'm concerned. With well, how soon do you want to I do, I just have to let the the expedite know what's going on. Oh, two weeks on it. So we're going to get this all off. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. Is that yeah. yeah. So, two so weeks I'll weeks. wait for the mail. Mm -hmm. Wait till you get it. All right. So the next up business is a... Uh, Notice of intent public hearing file number 170-0284 proposed replacement of southern and northern head walls in a culvert at 11 Nightly Rose, map 12A, between parcels 24A and 25. But before we open up that hearing, we have to actually close the previous file for this project. DEP file number 170-277 for another vote is no longer being pursued. Is this one we're going to have a hearing on tonight? Is this replacement because it's not done to the northern and the southern head walls? Where the original permit was going for the northern head wall. So, no work has started on that former permit. The GEP has advised the Conservation Commission to issue a certificate of compliance for this previous project that is to be marked as invalid with a comment explaining that no work was initiated or completed, basically, null and void. You can't have two open file numbers on an existing property project. So we have to close this one out first. This is recommended in an effort to stay in compliance with dual notice policy, which prohibits overlapping notice of intent. Scott McCarthy has been asked to fill out a request for certificate of compliance as a formality, and shall has drafted an invalid COC commission to sign should they vote to accept it. So I think everyone understands what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So we have a certificate of compliance form. I have the request that they made and the certificate that they made. Compliance. Both right there. So we have to eliminate that that form yeah, so and then they're re reapplying. So, so, the so the box has been checked as a valid order of condition. It is hereby certified that the work regulated by the above reference order condition has never commenced. The order of condition has lapsed. And therefore, no longer valid. No future work subject to regulation under the Wetlands Protection Act may commence without filing a new notice of consent and receiving a new set of work conditions, which we will be pursuing after. So, I need a motion to go ahead with this. I still move. Edwin makes the motion. Gordon seconds it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Everyone's unanimous. <coughs> that carries. Okay. So we have to sign that. We have to sign that. I'm not sure, Sean, if this is still current or not. This is 529.14. I downloaded that from the website. Do you know how the other ones, maybe they have changed? I, I have downloaded that directly from the state okay, website. Okay, that's fine. We'll use it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the hearing. Going back. Notice of the 10th public hearing, DEP file number 170-0284. Replace northern and southern head walls on a culvert 11 Lenny Road. The applicant is the town's DPW. As such, it is free. It is fee exempt. It's not permit exempt. The town is represented by Nick Christofori, PE of Comprehensive Environmental LLC. Resource areas to be impacted include inland bank, land underwater bodies, and waterways and river front area. 
This proposed project has been informally discussed at previous meetings where the applicant and the project representative have been able to answer many preliminary questions. At this point, a file number has been issued from the state, a voter is notified, and a legal ad posted. As such, comments or questions from DEP are to be reviewed and discussed, and additional questions, and any additional questions, if any, are to be raised. NHEST, their National Heritage and Major Species, has completed a review and determined that the project is currently proposed will not adversely affect the actual resource area habitat, the state protected rare wildlife species. They also determined that the project is currently proposed will not result in a prohibited take of state listed rare species. So, Nick, you, you on with us tonight? I am here. So, yeah. what else can you uh, update us with tonight? Did you look at the letter from the DEP? I did, I did, yes. And uh, there were three comments that were received from DEP. Uh, the way I understand their letter is that two of them. Uh, appeared related to the existing order of conditions for the site and recommending closing that out, uh, which I believe the board just did. And uh, Shiloh, correct me if I'm wrong. And then I believe that the only real comment that came out of DEP is as follows. Temporary impacts to the bank appear to exceed the threshold defined in 310 CMR 1054-4A5. The commission should seek clarification on how the applicant determined that the project would have no adverse effects on wildlife habitat as, defer, as determined by procedures contained in 310 CMR 10.60. Um, okay. So basically all that really kind of refers to is, is they say, okay, you're over the threshold. You know, what, what did you guys do to determine that your temporary impacts of which we have very little um, are in fact temporary and not really an issue. And one of the, one of the, the options as laid on the regulations is basically did an individual with at least a master's degree uh, and or at least two years experience at a wildlife habitat evaluation uh, make that evaluation that determination and the answer to that is yes that we we did that as part of our our due diligence part of this project so i feel confident that 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 comment is addressed okay is the board happy with that answer? Sure. Mm -hmm. Everyone? Mm -hmm. You need to get that. You okay. need to get it fixed. <clears throat> so anything else that we need to uh, talk about? Yeah. Uh, just watch the the drainage for the, from the fields. The, the plastic pipe on the east side of the brook and the metal pipe on the west side of the brook to make sure they remain open and during adverse weather, which who knows if we're gonna get, you tell me. But just, I'm just asking to be very careful of those sites, that's all. Yep, noted. And uh, just so that the board is aware, uh, I, I plan on attending a, a kickoff meeting with the contractor, like, you know, day day one, day two, day three of when he's out there. Thank you. When does, when's, what's the time frame for this project? tomorrow if we can get it well we have to uh close the hearing i, I think we're leaning we have two weeks trying to accomplish tonight and then get out the order conditions send it to the dep and wait for the appeal period to expire otherwise doing any work prior to that is subject to uh appeal by the dep i have mm -hmm. the specific deadline that's helpful Okay, so uh, after, after an order of conditions has been issued, work may not begin until the appeal period of 10 business days has passed if an appeal has been filed um, or if, until the EP is acted. So we have 21 days to issue the actual order and then 10 day, business days after that for the appeal period. So, so we have 21 days and then another 10? Well, 21 days for us to issue, it doesn't mean that we will take 21 days to issue oh, it. Usually, okay. you know, the following day or week, <laughs> out my hours permitting. Right. And, and, then, permitting. and then there's uh, someone from the DEP uh, 10 days after you issued yes. the permit. Yes. Okay. So if I issued it tomorrow, then DEP would have 10 days after that. Or if I issued it next Tuesday, they'd have 10 days after that. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I, you know, I get that. Would it be possible at all for us to start before then? Um, 
you know, like on our own at our own risk or something, you know, like even on the northern side, say that we that we had, that I, you know, we had we had permitting for obviously, which we don't anymore. Well, number one, you have to wait until you get the order conditions from the Conservation Commission. Nothing can be started until that's done. And then you have the 10 day appeal after that, which basically you'd be running at your own risk. But we have to issue our order conditions first. Okay. All right. I just thought I'd throw it out there. I'm not going to take 21 days. No. Okay. Um, to the commission, I don't know if you guys are on Zoom and can see, but I do see we have a question from the audience. Can I Go ahead. Pull it. Yeah, actually, as this is the origin, the only hearing for this, can you go through what the actual project is? Because otherwise you're holding a hearing on something that has not been discussed at a public hearing. And just to clarify, you do have to wait for the 10 days. Right, but we don't have to wait for the 21. No. Correct. Right. So, so the board, when the board, when we get the order of conditions, then we have to wait ten days after that. Yes. Right. All right. Okay. Um, to answer your question, yes. Let me let me run through the project real real briefly. Um, so, the project actually dates back about three years. So, about three years ago, a a snowplow hit the northern headwall on Knightley Road in the vicinity of Number Eleven, and broke the headwall, and the headwall fell into the stream. Um, the, the broken piece of headwall was, was, was since removed from the stream. However, the headwall is still damaged and it remains that way to this, to this time right now. Um, the headwall has started to lean a little bit more in, in, in recent years after repeated freeze and thaws, um, but it, it is still broken and, and still does, does need to be repaired. Um, in response, the town about a year ago received, uh, applied for and received an approved order of condition to replace the northern headwall. And uh, the town then so solicited bids to replace the northern headwall, which were about $40,000, and then found out that to also replace the southern headwall, which is not failed, but starting to deteriorate, that only added $10,000 onto the project. So basically as part of the town's due diligence they say well you know hey we can save basically thirty thousand dollars by replacing the southern headwall now rather than as part of a future project however at the time we didn't have permitting to to do the southern headwall we only had permitting to the northern headwall so uh in response over the last two three months or so uh the town has since applied for a new permit to replace both the northern and southern headwalls um, the town DPW has been working closely with the Conservation Commission to, to accelerate this project, and I, I want to go on record and say we appreciate uh, expediting it. I mean, you guys held at least, at least one special hearing, so you know, we definitely appreciate the Commission's assistance with that. So um, as far as the actual project itself, um, the project will replace the existing uh, cast in place or, or precast concrete structures with uh, these ready block systems. It is basically, it's like a gigantic concrete Lego. And um, the, the contractor who is Gilaher, they will be removing the existing headwalls on both the northern and southern ends. They'll be excavating slightly to uh, expose the existing footing, uh, constructing a cast in place concrete structure to act as a foundation, and then basically stacking these interlocking blocks on top of them um, to, to construct a new headwall on the northern and southern. Uh, known as other sides of Knightley Road. Uh, any, any work will be, any disturbances will be stabilized. Uh, we expect disturbances to be fairly minimal because uh, there won't be any large construction equipment allowed in the, on, the, on the banks or within the river stream itself. Um, you know, any excavators or anything like that will be limited to uh, access from Knightley Road. There will be, you know, some foot traffic and probably some some light hand tool type thing. You're probably going to need to have a compactor down there and, uh, you know, wheelbarrow and things of things of that nature. Um, other work is largely limited to the uh, there's some existing drainage channels that are in that area, which will need to to stabilize in order to help reduce any future erosion and, and erosive channels in that area. Um, basically, mostly going to be limited to to installing like um, riprap to stabilize those those channels. And um, I believe that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, I think most people on this call on the board have, have heard about this project. So I don't want to 
I don't want to beat it into the ground too much, but certainly if I missed anything, if, if anyone that hasn't heard this before, you know, please let me know any questions you have. So that, that right now, I guess I'll, I'll throw it back out there and see if a few people have anything to add. So the, the current flow of the stream will not be affected at all by this construction project. You're not going to be copper damming it or pumping the water around, correct? Nope. Nope. There are no plans to do that. I mean, you know, I can't guarantee that we're not going to have a hundred year storm, but uh, there's certainly no plans to do that. And I don't, I don't think there'll be an issue. Go ahead. Question? Yeah. Um, at one point, you had talked about widening the um, width because with the installation, um, the actual roadway, the distance between the two head walls will actually be about two feet narrower. And I guess my concern is if we're spending over it will end up being over $50,000 for the work that's being done um, just to replace head walls. And you said the head walls are nearing the end of their functional life. Since they were installed at the same time as the culvert, why are we not, or why was it not looked at to replace the culvert? And are you going to be, what work are you actually going to be doing in the culvert? Because there are some large cracks on the interior of the culvert. And what's the plan if the culvert fails? Yep, good question. Uh, so on the northern headwall, as, as you know, there is there's an area of deteriorated culvert probably extends in, say, a foot and a half or two feet, something like that, um, that will be repaired as part of the project. Uh, I mean, our, our hope is that you know, the culvert looked, other than that area, I mean, the culvert really looked like it was in pretty good shape. So, you know, we're hoping that by, that by constructing, um, you know, this upgraded, this improved head wall on the northern and southern end that we can, we can extend the life of that culvert, you know, well into the future. Um, I mean, we're spending, you know, $40,000, $50,000 roughly on, on the head walls right now to blow up that culvert and put a new one in, you know, your $40,000 project is probably becoming possibly a $400,000 project. Um, it really and truly is, it's, it's expensive once you get in, especially once you get into uh, bank full width, um, you know, insuring uh, wildlife passage and stuff, stuff like that. We um, were actually working with the town on a separate grant project on Moody Bridge Road. And, you know, what is originally like, say a four foot culvert becomes like a 12 foot culvert. So, um, that, you know, that's the plan right now. I mean, you know, we're trying to kind of do this for relatively not that much money. And, uh, you know, we just, we don't have that extra, you know, $350,000 say at this time to, uh, to improve that culvert. Um, so what is the plan? Um, again, as I said, the, the, you have stated in your um, documents that the plan that the head walls are at the end of their life and this culvert is listed as in fair condition. So what is the expected life for a culvert um, that's in fair condition? And are we spending this money at this point? And is it something that could fail because of the amount of development that has occurred upstream that goes through this area. I mean, the drainage area is almost a square mile, just under a square mile. All of the development that has occurred off of Shattuck Road, the majority of that comes down through this drainage area and through that culvert. So are we putting money into something that potentially could fail? And I know everyone is talking about, we need to get this done for the farmers. And I agree it needs to be fixed. My concern is that we are not doing this in a logical procession because we haven't looked at the drainage area. We haven't looked as done run drainage calculations as to whether or not this actual culvert is properly sized for what new development has occurred, new as in the last 30 years. Um, upstream, and are we throwing money away? That's a big concern of that. 
Uh, well, I mean, I mean, I don't, I probably can't answer all of your questions, but I'll, but I'll do the best I can. Um, so, I mean, you know, the culvert's in fair condition, so, you know, it, it's not going to fail. I mean, it shouldn't fail within like two years. I would, I would expect 20 years probably out of it. I mean, it's, it, it looks like, you know, other than, other than that small de deterioration up front, I mean, it, it should be, it, it should last. I mean, even, even the Southern headwall really is in pretty good condition. It's really just that Northern headwall because it got whacked with snowplow. Um, I mean, yes, I, I agree with you hundred percent. We, we have not looked at, we haven't done a, you know, a hydraulic and, and hydrologic model and H and H study as part of this project. You know, we haven't, we haven't done a comprehensive drainage analysis of everything that goes in. I mean, you know, really, this was really focused on replacing the failed head wall on the Northern side. And then, oh, you know, we're, we're going to try and save some money as well on, on the Southern, the Southern end of it. Um, I can, I don't have the stream stats in front of me. I mean, I can almost guarantee you that that culvert is undersized by, you know, feet. I mean, it's pro that the bankful width on that thing is probably at least eight, 10 feet. So, you know, you're basically half of what your bankful width is. Um, and if I had to guess 90, 97% of the culverts within the town are probably undersized in that capacity. 97% of the culverts in every town are probably undersized in that capacity. Um, it's really been fairly recently, I think, that that any um, meaningful study and effort has, and money funding has been allocated to upsizing these culverts to allow for, for, for wildlife passage. Well, I guess my concern isn't necessarily the wildlife passage part of this. It's more of the impact um, when water backs up. Because when there are storms, I mean, I'm probably half a mile away from it. And when that culvert backs up, the ditch in back of my house, not the stream, the ditch becomes bank full. So if it's improperly sized, why are we putting all this money into it um, with something that isn't necessarily going to work yeah 20 years great it may be two years you know it it may have an issue that when they start excavating um with that because those blocks are pretty big you know about four feet by four feet just under they're going to be excavating in the road they're going to have to do saw cutting um in and around and what happens if the culvert fails at that point that they hit something and it fails, then we are spending, you know, fifty thousand um, dollars, and it is. It came in at like forty nine thousand, the bid from the contractor, and yep. then we've got your costs, and then if there is any type of a, any structural engineer that needs to be on site during there, or an environmental person, and who is going to oversee the wetland replication that's gonna work on there. You've now pushed the cost of this project way up. So my, my concern is that it's been so piecemealed, it hasn't been done right from the beginning, going back three years in March, almost to the day when an emergency certification was issued for that to be fixed, for the concrete to be removed and the head wall to be to be fixed and we're getting into the spring and I know you want to do the work I know the farmers want to get the work done prior to the um, farming season so to speak but who is going to be the contact person and making the decisions if we get an extremely wet spring before this work is done who's going to make the judgment call as to whether or not um, work has to stop or be suspended. Uh, I guess I would I would defer to the board. I think on on that one and get your thoughts. Probably be something like common sense. You know, if the water's coming up, you have to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what if it's all what if happened? What if this happened? What if that happened? It's a head wall. It's only forty thousand dollars in this day and age. That's nothing. Get it, get it done. We gave an emergency permit two years ago. Now we're doing the exact same thing two years later, and now it's not good enough. 
don't want to Right. I mean, if you want to reconstruct the whole road and make it wider and put two culverts in and make it right, well, that's a whole other story, but that's not what we're here for. Um, just to clarify, um, three years ago, the board gave permission for the head wall to be repaired. And a year ago, it was repair with um, repair in place, not removal and not a total reconstruction of both head walls or even one head wall. It was inserting rebar and pour in place repair, which is very different than what is being proposed here. This is a complete excavation in the area. And I understand the frustration and people wanting to say, hey, let's get it done. Let's use common sense. Um, contractors aren't around on Saturdays, which tends to be when there are the most um, storms that we've seen. If you wanna uh, use for an example, right on Route 9, a couple of those big projects. Um, Edwin, I know you went out to a number of them where we had some big rain and things started flooding and people had to be contacted. So, you know, if the commission is gonna go forward to this, the commission's gonna to have to be uh, aware and um, in a sense vigilant because Nick doesn't live in town. Um, he's not gonna be looking at that. The contractors from, uh, I think, East Hampton, he's not gonna be in town. So when you get a gush or a big uh, storm and you've got a lot of muddy water going downstream because the only erosion control you have are the um, little logs, that's not gonna stop a heck of a lot. So I think the commission really needs to look at what actually the process is of what's being done here. And yeah, we all wanna get it done. I'd love to, I'd travel that over that culvert two, three times a day. And I'd love to have it done. I would have liked to have it done this summer with the permit that was issued during low flow, but it wasn't done. And the fact that this is being pushed through without real um, and engineered kind of as we go, isn't the way projects typically are done. If this was before the planning board, a project before the planning board, they would have um, gone up one side of it, down the other. So I don't think the Conservation Commission should be looking the other way or saying, let's just get this done because uh, the farmers want it. Um, it's gonna have a lot more impact on the farmers and on me as a resident if that culvert fails or there's uh, delays or, or problems. North Hadley Pond is polluted enough as it is and all the drainage goes into North Hadley Pond. If that blows out, that's where it's heading and you're gonna take the culvert out probably on Stockbridge too. So that's, I, I really think that this project has been pushed. Um, I think it has not uh, been looked at um, from a scientific or an engineered process. Um, and I know the commission is gonna do what they want to do, but I, I really hope that you look at and set the parameters that need to be followed for this. Because when the project went out to bid, the cons original conservation commission permit wasn't even attached. So there's a lot of issues here. Hey, Nick, I got a question for you, if I could cut in. Hey, uh, have you sleeved any of the culverts? I know the old rotten ones, they really need to be replaced, but some of this structure uh, uh, with an internal sleeve, we've done uh, quite a few thousand feet of sewer line with uh, the blown in uh, line. So once these walls are up at some point, if, if, it's, if it's somewhat reasonable to blow that in there and uh, put it in, it's, it's only a matter of a couple of hours for curing time to seal it up. I know we had looked at a few other culverts in town that were concrete rather than digging them up and replacing them to uh, sleeve them. 
Yeah, I'm not as as familiar with that. Uh, I mean, this is this is basically a box culvert. I'm not I'm I'm not sure how it would work, you know, compared to like a typical circular pipe. Um, yeah, they, they do the bigger box culverts also. We've talked to a few companies, so. Hmm. Um, well, it's not it's not something we've looked at so so far as as part of this project. Yeah, no, not part of this project. I just wondered if you've done any in the in in the past. Uh, I know a few of them have, have done them, and more and more are doing them just for the environmental impact. So you don't have to dig them up and replace them. You know. Mm, yeah, yeah. I I haven't I haven't personally, but but it, you know we we have as a company we've we've done that kind of stuff before. How long is this project going to take? I believe the contractor is thinking about three to four weeks. Is Scott here with the DPW tonight? I, I am. What are your thoughts, Scott? Uh, I, I'm hoping you give us permission to move forward. I think uh, the four week mark might be a little much i think he can do it a little faster obviously uh weather is going to play a factor if, he, if we get some good dry working weather i think it's going to go pretty pretty fast once they once they get going you, you set your first couple blocks but it doesn't take long to do so what's going to happen if we have a problem with the culprit when you excavate what do we do then well according to our our uh survey of it we shouldn't have any problem with the box culvert because it was inspected the uh the box culvert uh isn't really part of the head wall see it's up to control the line somewhere obviously the head wall was damaged by a snowplow truck the snowplow truck didn't hit that so we wouldn't even be here doing this tonight mm. so obviously the head wall is in this repair the culvert seems to be in decent shape if you want to blow this up into a project, that's a question we have. We have to look at the project in front of us as you're proposing it and either approve or disprove it. I'm of the opinion we'll just let them go ahead and replace the head walls and see what happens afterwards. But that's the call the DPW as to how far they want to take the project. How's the rest of the board feel? Get it done. I agree with you, uh, Gary. I don't disagree. Let's, it, it's been way too long. It's been way too long. And let's, again, everything that anybody does in the town of Hadley is in a fishbowl. Everybody knows what everything is doing. I think the EPW, the, the engineer, the construction company will have people looking over their shoulder all the time. And I think that you know, we can, we can, as a commission, recommend that they put in more uh, silicons, you know, something like that. Because there, I know that it was just, they were going to do the little waddle or whatever they're called. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, let's, let's just do it. Let's just use common sense. Maybe have them do a little bit of more of uh, protect the environment and protect the, the ditch that's there, and we'll get it done. I, I agree with Scott. I don't think if if we can get this uh, going, it's probably not going to take a month. It might. Who knows? I as to the life of the culvert, who knows? You wanna, you know? I don't. I don't really know. I don't think there's a person living on the face of the earth that can tell us that that culvert will not fail in two days or 200 years. I don't know if there is someone. I honestly don't. So let's just get it done. So do I have a motion from anybody to close the hearing? I'll take the motion to close it. Who's going to make a motion? Steve. Steve. Second? Second by Gordon. Yeah. Any further discussion? Uh, do we want to have them do any, uh, what is for the erosion control? <laughs> what is, 
Excuse me. The special condition? Special yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've already got a order to go in place. Right. But is it enough? That's all I'm asking. You. Well, I'm sure if they determine it, the, the, uh, that's your job. <laughs> Well, I hope Nick, so. is there enough erosion control in place in your opinion? Uh, you know, we've we've tried to, to to be reasonable for what the project is. You know, we're really mostly just trying to protect against you know foot traffic and kind of kind of incidental uh, erosion by during the construction. You know, I mean, we're not we're not doing coffer dam, we're not doing anything crazy like that. So uh, you know, I I think that for the for the expected type of disturbance under the project, I think they're acceptable. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go with that. This project is presented with the plans as drafted. The recent one being February 23rd, 2022. And we'll go with our standard set of border conditions like we had in the last project. It's rather a boilerplate, about four pages. What applies and doesn't apply. And I would extend the other special conditions from the prior project because this one is basically just a duplication. The only difference being that I can see is that we're, we're letting you do with the project now and not during the dry season. Yeah, if we could remove the time of year restriction, that would be appreciated. Basically, just copy all the same order conditions as they apply. This notice has been sent with the removal of the uh, the time frame you can do with it. And it's, you have to be notified before the project construction begins. We should be getting daily, if not weekly, updates. If there's a problem at the site, what will be the order of command? Who will be notified and who if you have a problem? Who's going to be in control of overseeing this project? Will you be involved, Nick? Uh, I mean, you know, Scott, I can, I can take it if you want. I mean, you know, you're, you're there. I mean, I'm, I'm two hours hey, plus away. <laughs> I, I, I can oversee the project and if I have any uh, concerns or problems, I can reach out to uh, Nick or uh, your board. I'm not who, who you're to talk to it would be Gary or Shiloh, but if we have any trouble. I, I can uh, get in touch with you immediately. <laughs> Or to get a hold of me, but get a hold of me and Charlotte as well. Yeah. If you see a problem, don't don't let it get worse. Hold them up. Yeah. Hold them next. So yeah. Uh, as they come up and try to uh, address any problems, if we have any problems, hopefully they'll go go quickly. Yes, and just a comment on a uh, respond to a comment that was made earlier. Uh, obviously, the contractor, you know, is out of town or whatever, and they're they're not twenty four seven, but. Uh, the DPW is, we are 24 seven. So if there is any problems or that arise there, uh, we always have uh, staff available to deal with any situations. The other thing drastically changes the part as to how you're doing this project as you proceed, you need to notify right away. Okay. Yeah, from the audience, any comments? Any comments from anybody? Okay. Hearing none, let's put it to a vote. All those in favor? Gordon? Aye. Edwin? Aye. Steve? Aye. Ray? Aye. Myself? Aye. Staff, the manner. Let's get this done. Get the order to get this done as quickly as possible. Okay. I'd like thank to thank, you. like to thank the commission for your time. Like I said, you know, appreciate your your assisting with this and, and pushing this project along forward. Um, you know, Shyla, you know, please let me know when everything's available because because as you know, the contractor is anxious to to get to get shovels in the ground on this. So uh, and then you know that way we can set up kickoff day and and I want to get out there and meet with them. So um, appreciate your assistance on this and uh, looking forward to getting this getting this done. Thank you. Thank you. So we took care of that. 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 We We took care of that. Two bills. Bills, two invoices will be coming this time. I don't have them yet. I put them there in case I have them for the meeting. But so we'll continue at the next meeting. Okay, that's that's continue.
Yeah. Updates. Charlotte Beasley began working with Stantec, an engineering consulting firm in Northampton, as a project scientist supporting the what is permanent team. This may result in future conflicts of interest events to be addressed if and when they should arise. But it's only going to help in getting Charlotte more trained and be definitely more helpful to us as a board yep. as she gets this experience working with Stantec. Glimpses into the future, there are two notice, new notice of intents likely to be coming up in April, one for a single family home, one unknown at this time. So we have potentially two more NOIs coming up. We haven't seen them yet, they're supposed to be advertised, we have to get a file number, so they may not even make it in time for April's agenda. Nice. Upcoming learning opportunities, MACC virtual conference is underway. There might be room in the last few days. The conference ends 312 and Charlotte could not attend one. There is money available already voted to spend for this. If anybody is for the commission is wishing to join. So we had agreed on a certain amount that I could spend on the conference for the past meeting and I couldn't attend one of them. So there's a little bit of money left over, but it's almost over. So I didn't know if yeah. you wanted to go, but okay. I'd let you know. Thank you. <laughs> is there anything else the board wish to address tonight? No. No. Hearing no. that, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Board. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.